Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. I'm going to start a new series for TP Link Amada full setup from start to finish. I've already done a couple other videos in the past. They were longer videos. These will be shorter videos, so it's easier to digest. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server, which I'll put a link in the description below. So in this first video, we'll just take a look at some of the hardware that you could use in TP-Link Amata, and I'll show you the topology that we'll be using for this video series. We'll also get our devices adopted into Amata. In the second video, I'll show you how to create multiple networks. First thing we want to consider is our controller. Where do we want Amata sitting? So we could download a software controller. You could put it in a virtual machine, or you could have it hosted locally on your computer. The other option is you could have a hardware controller. So they have the OC300 and the OC200. The differences between the OC300 and 200, the amount of devices that can be adopted into it. After we choose the controller, whether it be software or hardware, we want to choose our router firewall. For this, we have two different models. We have the ER7206 and then we have the ER605. The ER7206 has an SFP port on it, whereas the ER605 just has RJ45 Ethernet ports. Then after we know which router we're going to use, we would want to see which switches, whether you need PoE or not. So as you can see, there's a lot of different switches that could integrate with Mata. So you just need to choose how many ports you need, as well as if you need PoE or not. And the last thing we need to choose is our access points. Again, we have Wi-Fi 6 and we have Wi-Fi 5 access points. We're going to be using a mix of both. I have the EAP660 HD for my Wi-Fi 6 access point, as well as some EAP265 HDs. Now let's look at the topology that we'll be using and building upon in this video series. And this is the topology that we're going to be using. So at the top, we're going to have the TLR605, and that's our router firewall connecting to the internet. We're going to have it connecting to a switch, the TLSG2008P. This has four ports PoE and four ports non-PoE. Our Amada hardware controller, the OC200, will be connected to the switch. And then we'll have an EAP660HD Wi-Fi 6 access point. From the EAP660, we're going to do a wireless mesh to another EAP. And these are the networks that we're going to create. The LAN will be sitting on 192.168.10.1.24. We'll have a staff network on 192.168.20.1 slash 24 VLAN 20. And then we'll have a guest network on 192.168.30.1 slash 24 on VLAN 30. For this video, we're going to get the R605, the SG2008P, and the EAP660HD adopted into our OC200. We're going to do the wireless mesh uplink in another video. So this is just one part of the topology. We're going to build upon this. So the second part that we'll be doing is to connect a point to point link back to our network. So we'll have two CPE 710 point to point antennas and connecting to the antenna on the remote side will be a TLSG 3452P. Connecting to that switch, we'll have an EAP 265HD. So this is great if you had a remote office or a garage and you needed a point to point link. I'll show you how to set that up. And the final stage will be to do a site to site VPN. We can see at the top, we'll have another TLR605 and then a TLSG 2008P with an EAP 265HD. These will be connected to the main site through a site-to-site -site VPN. The networks on this side will be our LAN of 192.168.100.1 slash 24, staff of 192.168.110.1 slash 24 on VLAN 110, and then we'll have a guest network on 192.168.120.1 slash 24 on VLAN 120. We're going to create some firewall rules to allow this staff network to communicate back with our Synology NAS to access files. But that's the only thing that we want that network to be able to access from this site to site VPN. So this is going to be a great video series. I'm very excited to be working on it and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So now let's get our main site adopted into the OC200 controller. Now the gear is connected and my PC is plugged into the switch. We need to locate the IP for the Amada OC200. If we bring up a command prompt and type IP config, we could see that I'm on 192.168.0.184. 
I'm going to use a program called Advanced IP Scanner to scan that subnet. So we can see 192.168.0.1 to 254. It's going to scan the whole network. All right, and we could see a couple different addresses. So we could see 192.168.0.1. I'm going to assume that's my router. And then we could see 192.168.0.125 as well as 197. Let's try to see if 125 is our controller. I'll open up a new tab and then we'll type in 192.168.0.125. And 0 0.125 was our Amada OC200 controller. And now it's going to bring us through a wizard. It says, let's get started. And it's going to say, set your controller name. I'm going to call this Mac Telecom Lab. It will also ask you to set your country or region. I'm in Canada, so we'll search that up. Press Canada. And then we will select our time zone. And I'm in Eastern time zone. Now there's a bunch of different application scenarios. I'm not too sure what this changes in the configuration, but we'll choose office and then press next. It's not showing any of our switches or routers to adopt, but that's fine. We'll press next. We'll skip creating the SSID. Now we have controller access, create an administrator name and password for local login. I'll call mine Mac Telecom, and then we'll create a password. If you'd like to attach this to cloud access, you could enter your TP-Link ID and password, and then log in and bind. We're not going to do that just yet, and I'll press next. It will give us a summary of our settings, and we'll press finish. Now it's brought us back to the Amada login page. We're going to enter our new username and password. The Amada controller brings up a couple tips, so it will show you an overview. It will show us the site management, network monitor, account management, and settings. Tutorial is finished, so we could start configuring our network. And now we're in the Amada dashboard. We could see internet capacity, gateway switches, EAPs, clients, and guests. They're all sitting at zero right now. We don't have any devices adopted into this controller. We look down in the bottom right corner. I have no internet access either. And this is because I use a static IP and we haven't configured that yet. If you use DHCP, you will most likely have internet access at this point. So let's go ahead and adopt our devices. From the pane on the left hand side, we could go down to devices. Once we're in devices, we could see all the equipment that is pending adoption. We just need to click on the device and then press adopt. And we'll do that for the router, the switch and the access point. After a few minutes, we could see all the devices have adopted into our controller. Now we need to get internet access onto our router. So if we click the settings wheel, we could see a bunch of different options. We have wired networks, wireless network security, transmission, VPN. What we're concerned with right now is a wired network. Click the drop down and then we see internet. We have a few different ports that we could select. We have the WAN port, we have WAN slash LAN1, WAN2, and WAN3. There's also this online detection interval. Under WAN, we could see IPv4 connection type and it's set to dynamic. For most networks, you'll be using dynamic IP. But if you don't have a dynamic IP, you may have a static IP, TPPoE, L2TP, or PPTP. I'm going to be setting up a static IP, so I'll click static. And then we're going to enter our IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Under the advanced setting, it's going to ask us for our MTU size and our DNS servers. I'll add all my information and then we'll click apply. Now we're connected to the internet and we could test it by pinging google.ca. And we could see that we have network access. So the last thing we need to do in this video is change the subnet of our LAN interface. Right now we're sitting on 192.168.0.1/24, but we want this to be 192.168.10.1/24. So we'll click on the actions and then edit the LAN. We could change the name if we'd like, but I don't need to. So the gateway subnet will be 192.168.10.1/24, and then we'll update the DHCP range. Scroll to the bottom and press save. We could see that it's updated, but we want to update our computer. So I'll type IP config space slash release and then IP config space slash renew. Now our computer's got an IP address at 192.168.10.207. So that was the basic setup of our Armada controller and our devices. In the next video, we'll start creating some networks and then tagging ports with those specific VLANs. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button if you're new here please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.